Jamie Raskin lied to the American people. That's what Representative Comer said. And we had some questions about this. Remember, we're caught in the middle of this battle between the FBI and the Oversight Committee in Congress. Oversight says, hey, FBI, we know you've got this bad document that implicates the Joe Biden Crichton family. And it says that there was a $5 million quid pro quo between VP Joe and some other foreign actor FBI. You have the document. Give it to us. We have jurisdiction over the FBI as Congress. And they sent a subpoena over there. Well, Christopher Ray showed up and said, well, I'm going to kind of show you the document. You can't see this. You can't touch it. You can't hold on to it. Most of it's redacted, but I am technically in compliance with the subpoena, right? Because I brought this document over to you. Wrong. And yesterday, Comer said, no, that's not how this works. You're going to be held in contempt. You leave the document right here, sir, and you take all the redactions off it. If you don't, problems. Turns out he wasn't going to do it. He snubbed him. He said, we're the FBI. How dare you talk to me like that? And then he walked right out of there with his document in hand and James Comer was like a poor kid at a prom date. He's like, what the heck just happened to me, man? So now FBI is out of there. And after this proceeding happened, Jamie Raskin and Representative Comer, they came out and gave a press conference to us. And we spent time on this yesterday. And I was shocked because we had two totally different interpretations. Comer came out and told us that the reason the FBI was not going to hand over the document was because it was part of an ongoing and open investigation. And they can't interfere interfere with that. And that was their justification. That was the pretext for not handing over the document. So Comer's like, well, I guess, I mean, if it's part of an ongoing investigation, we got to do something else about this. I, I still want to see it. He said, well, I can't give it to you. And so that was the end of it. Now, 60 seconds later, after he told us that was the basis for withholding the document, Raskin came out and sold us this other bizarre story about the investigation being closed. And Bill Barr appointed somebody, Scott Bailey, who then appointed other prosecutors and they investigated the whole thing and they came up with nothing. As though this investigation was closed. The FD 1023 form that we really want is irrelevant because it's already been looked at and already been exonerated. And so we're sitting here scratching our heads yesterday going, well, that's great news because if it's been exonerated, if it has been reviewed and they declined prosecution, and as Jamie Raskin said, Bill Barr signed off on it. Somebody else named Scott signed off on it. There should be records about that. We should be able to see that. And if it really is truly totally innocent stuff of Joe Biden, why don't you just show us the documents? Let us see it because it should be clear. And Jamie Raskin gave us this constitutional law lecture. And then he realized, oh crap, I stepped in it. James Comer just came out and told an entirely different version and the media called him out on it. So now we're trying to get our bearing straight. Who is telling the truth? What the heck happened? And Raskin is being called a liar. James Comer came out and explained to Fox News that that is not what the briefing said. Real quick, because we're running this short on time here. Um, you say it's an ongoing investigation. Your colleague, the ranking uh, member on the committee, Jamie Jamie Raskin says, oh, no, this is an old investigation. It's over. Here's what he said yesterday. It's over, yeah. What I know is that the FBI Department of Justice team under William Barr and Scott Brady in the Western District of Pennsylvania terminated the investigation. They said there were no grounds for further investigative steps. Oh, so they ended that. So and we've got sources in the DOJ who say that's not exactly true, that Scott Brady may have not continued with an investigation, but all of this was turned over to David Weiss in Delaware, who's heading up the Hunter Biden investigation. What do you know about this ongoing investigation? I know Jamie Raskins walked straight out there and lied to the American people. Oh. Uh, the FBI said four times oh. in that brief that he and I sat in, that this was part of an ongoing investigation. You're that kidding. was their primary reason for not wanting to release this document. So you're so, saying he heard those words? He heard it four times. Whoa. Not once, not twice, not three times, four times. Because he, he seemed to have not heard it. Yeah, he seemed to have not heard it. That's what he said. He, did, he didn't recall. You always have to watch the words from these guys like Jamie Raskin. Slippery Jamie. You know, Jamie Raskin's quite honestly had to feel uncomfortable uh, with some of the, the allegations in this form. And uh, when this form eventually becomes public, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. So Ooh. very disappointing that Raskin said that. I don't put a lot of stock in anything that Raskin or, or Adam Schiff says about congressional investigations. Real quick, because we're running. Dang, called him a straight liar. He heard it four times. He was in the same briefing. And yeah, we know Jamie Raskin has cancer, but he acted like he was cognizant and mentally acute. So was he directly lying to us? And as we said, I don't know what else he was thinking because he didn't give us another reason for why the document was being withheld. He didn't say, well, you know, the investigation was over, but it's still classified because it's not, or it's still from a confidential human source. Okay, that's true, but 
but we have the human source who wants the document out. So protecting what? Sources and methods? For what? A closed investigation, Jamie? No. So the FBI, the only thing that they can do is say it's part of an ongoing investigation. They're like, well, what investigation? Like, I don't know. Did we make one up somewhere at some point in time? Uh, I don't know. Put, shove it in the Hunter Biden case. Uh, perfect. Put it, just put it in the uh, manila folder. Just put it on this one and put it over here and nobody ever knows. Did you see anything? No, I didn't see anything either. So Raskin lied to the American people and he didn't mince words about that. One more time, this is Comer with a conclusion. Brady may have not continued with an investigation, but all of this was turned over to David Weiss in Delaware, who's heading up the Hunter Wrong. Biden investigation. What do you know about this ongoing investigation? I know Jamie Raskin's walked straight out there and lied to the American people. Damn. The FBI said four times You're a liar, bro. in that briefing that he and I sat in that this was part of an ongoing investigation. That was their primary reason for not wanting to release this document. So you're so saying he heard those words? He heard it four times. Not once, <laughs> not twice, not three times, four times. Because he seemed to have not heard it. Yeah, he seemed to have not heard it. Well, that's what he said. He, did, he didn't recall. You always have to watch the words from these guys like Jamie Raskin. You do have to watch the words. And, you know, let's go back. Since we're here, let's rewind the clock. We have the show from yesterday. And we're just going to navigate over to that. We're just going to watch that one little clip again and see specifically what slippery Jamie Raskin had to say about all this facts giving rise to suspicion of criminal activity. Yeah. So they apparently decided that there was not, and they called an end to the investigation. Uh, and now it's recall over. that this is under Attorney General William Barr and his hand-picked prosecutor, yeah. uh, Mr. Brady, who was a Trump appointee. They were the ones who decided that there was no grounds further based on what this confidential Great. human so source document. Uh, uh -huh. reported from conversation with another person. They decided there was no grounds to escalate this up to the investigative no prosecutorial chain. Questions uh, for you. So if there's a complaint, the complaint is with Attorney General William Barr, the Trump Justice Department, and the team that the Trump administration appointed to look into it. But I, you know, I'm just surprised that my colleagues want to try to uh, litigate this in public, much less hold the director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation in contempt for complying with their request when there was a he didn't comply he brought the document and went home with it whole process that was undertaken and that process uh, came to its natural all right so the media busted yes. on this so big time opinion, there was no criminal, criminal charges scott bring about here is a confidential human source reporting a conversation with someone else so what we're talking about is secondhand hearsay media busting uh, right and here and they did whatever now watch him collapse investigative due diligence was called for in that assessment period and they found no reason to escalate it from an assessment from an assessment to a so-called preliminary investigation yeah look at this listen now, to this that comes a full it's a nice story yes so now he gets totally busted right here this is where he gets caught in the lie this is what comer was referencing thank you very much so from what you're saying, is Chairman Comer not telling the truth and that there's an ongoing... Is Comer not telling the truth? ...to this allegation that then Vice President Biden took a bribe from a foreign official? Wait, so... What? what? It was an ongoing You said it was an ongoing investigation. investigation. Okay, but I, Busted. well, I, I, I'm not privy to what the chairman had to say. There has certainly been no, but you were in the room. Hello. Did you hear that four times or not? Published reports that there is an ongoing investigation in Delaware by the U.S. attorney, I believe related to Hunter Biden. Yeah. So maybe that's the one. Did you not put two and two together there? So that's all that I know. Any indication that this document that you guys were briefed on today is part of an ongoing investigation? The... But, but. So she asked more specifically, did, and this was great. Did the FBI tell you today anything that this was an ongoing investigation in any way? What I know is that the FBI Department of Justice team under William Barr and Scott Brady he wasn't in even the Western listening. District of Pennsylvania Probably terminated asleep. the investigation. They said there were no grounds Plain for phone. further investigative steps. So they ended Jeremy that. Comer, now, in terms of another investigation, uh, you know, I can't speak to that. I have That's seen not what they're about asking. That. And other than, you know, published reports. So, so Look, all the questions. This document in particular, is it part, the, of, an is it part of an ongoing investigation? Is this document part of an ongoing investigation? That's what he learned. Okay. Uh, but then I must have missed that because I've not heard that this is part of any <laughs> ongoing investigation. No. So. No, I've never heard of it. No, no. Ongoing what? Comer says he heard it four times and that's him. No, never heard of it. What are you talking about?
Uh, but then I must have missed that because I've not heard that this is part of any ongoing investigation. Absolutely nuts. So he, apparently he was just in an entirely different press briefing. He was doing something not that he was not paying attention to. So Raskin lying through his teeth, according to Representative Comer. And they came out to set the record straight on this. The Oversight Committee posted this. They said, it's time to debunk Democrat information. Unsurprisingly, liars like Adam Schiff well, and Jamie Raskin, Democrats are spreading disinformation about yesterday's FBI briefing on the Biden bribery record. We're going to set the record straight. Says, here's the claim. Democrats allege that the FD 1023 record is based on secondhand hearsay, just like we heard from Raskin. But here's the fact. The record memorializes a credible, confidential human sources conversations, the firsthand conversations with a foreign national who claimed to have bribed Biden, right? So this guy says, I spoke to somebody who was literally involved in the crime. He told me this, this is a credible person. They say this informant has worked for the FBI for 10 plus years. So it's not this he said, she said game. It's the dude, the whistleblower who submitted the report actually talked to the counterpart who was involved in the crime. The guy who claimed to have bribed Biden is who the whistleblower spoke to. So the only other person who was involved in this is Joe, apparently, or Hunter or his bag man, his brother, we don't know, but it's not multiple layers removed. He literally talked with the guy who put the order in for the $5 million policy change. Here's another claim. Democrats say that the DOJ investigated the FD 1023 and took no action, as we just heard from Raskin. Here's the fact. The DOJ conducted, quote, an assessment on separate material provided to the DOJ in January 2020. The FD 1023 was generated by the FBI on 6-30-2020 based on another FBI record from 2017. Now this is interesting. So we have to ask ourselves, when did the FBI ultimately know about this? And Joe Biden was the vice president up until 2017 when Trump took over. So the FBI had a record and then something else happened internally. We don't really know what happened or why the FD10, what triggered the FD1023 form to be generated. Was there new information? Did the whistleblower come back up or did something trigger what may have been a dormant record in from 2017 up to 2020? However, Ever, right? I mean, just think of the timing on this. So this whistleblower comes out, this document needs to come to the forefront in 2020, which is election year. This happens in June and the FBI wants to sit on this thing and bury it. That'd be devastating if a $5 million quid pro quo allegation came out from a 10 plus year FBI informant. Wouldn't that be a problem for Biden's? Yeah, so well, better put that in the closet rest next to the Hunter file. You know what I'm saying? We all know the Hunter file, it's big. That's why we need a closet. The assessment was closed out in August, 2020, this assessment. The FBI refused to answer what information was part of their so-called assessment in August. If the 630, the June FD 1023 form was included in the quote assessment, how could the DOJ have conducted a credible thorough investigation in just four weeks? Very questionable. Well, it's because it's Joe Biden and they did not want Donald Trump to win. They were part of the same intelligence apparatus just next door to the CIA. And the CIA was twisting themselves into knots to make sure Donald Trump did not get elected, including by having Mike Morrell lead the effort to collude with Anthony Blinken to sign a letter to give Joe Biden talking points so he could dismiss the Hunter Biden laptop story as Russian disinformation. So do you think the FBI is going through a more rigorous process? I mean, the CIA was openly working for him. I mean, not officially the government, but come on, let's be real. All of these retired CIA ex-feds as though they're not at the same cocktail parties and out there doing the business of the Bureau of the agency for all of America to see. Give me a break. So how could they do it in four weeks? Well, easy. It's the FBI. This is the wrong type of defendant. They're looking for, you know, at this point in time, Whitmer plotters that were created by the FBI. They're not focused on Hunter. That would be devastating to Joe's case. Here, Democrats, another allegation. They allege that the FD 1023 has been closed. Here's the fact from the Oversight Committee. The FBI FBI confirmed multiple times that the information contained within the FD-1023 is being used in an ongoing investigation. As Comer said clearly, Democrats claim that the FD-1023 is part of the documents that Rudy Giuliani gave to the FBI in January. Not true. The fact is the June 30th FD-1023 form stands on its own, contains other information from the FBI's confidential human source dating back to another FD-1023 generated in 2000. 
117. Now we see the chain. We were a little bit confused about that up here. Why was the FD 1023 generated on another FBI record? There it is. It's because it contains information from the source that references back to another 1023. Source drops some information with the FBI. The FBI doesn't act on FD 1023 2017. That file sits around. CHS comes back and says, I've got more information. Remember when I was here in 2017 to supplement that? You're not going to believe it. This is what now I've got now. Turns out Joe Biden actually was the person behind that thing. He was the VP. So I'm supplementing that. It's election year, June 2020. I've got new information for you. It references back an old thing that you were already looking at from right after Joe Biden left the office and Trump came in and it relates back. That's why we are asking about it. So the claim is that it's part of these Giuliani documents. Fact is not true. Two FD 1023s, one likely incomplete, not actionable and layered on referenced by the 2020 1023 relating back to the earlier document because it provides new value. They say that the disinformation from the left reinforces that the FBI needs to produce this unclassified FD 1023 record to the oversight committee saying Americans demand answers, transparency and accountability. And that is the oversight committee setting the record straight. Now, apparently it was a pretty interesting meeting yesterday. Representative Anna Paula Luna, she said that after the meeting, while Jamie Raskin was asleep playing games on his phone, Luna said this, hey, we just left the meeting for the House Oversight Committee. Uh, the FBI is afraid their informant will be killed if unmasked based on the info he has brought forward about the Biden family. So that doesn't sound good at all. Wonder if Jamie Raskin heard that one. Guessing not. So Jim Jordan and James Comer, they were making the airwaves talking about exactly what happened at this hearing. And so let's get caught up on let's, that. Right. This particular document was dated in 2020, but there are notes in the document that date back to 2017. Mm. We believe that this uh, human source uh, initially informed the FBI of the bribery scheme back in 2017. So my question to the FBI was, what exactly have you done with this accusation? Because the FBI admitted that this is a highly credible, in fact, one of their most highly credible human sources. They admitted that they had paid this source a substantial amount of money, and he had been a part of the Bureau for 13 years, dating back to the Obama administration. And their answer to me, Sean, was, well, it's now a part of an ongoing investigation. We don't know which investigation? We don't know when the investigation began. All we know is two weeks ago, they tried to act like this form didn't exist. And here we are today with the FBI bringing the form to the House of Representatives. But not leaving it there. James Comer, let's talk about where your committee is ultimately headed with your investigation. And OK, and let's assume that you hold Director Ray in contempt. What does that mean as of Thursday? Well, we're setting an example. Uh, when we subpoena information, there's a reason why. And we expect to get that information. The House Oversight Good. Committee was created to have oversight over the federal government. And what uh, Ted Cruz mentioned earlier and Jim Jordan talks about all the time is we have these federal bureaucracies uh, that think they're immune to oversight. So we're following the money, Sean. I said this in December when we announced the investigation. We were going to follow the money. And obviously what we demonstrated a few weeks ago when we uh, showed proof that there were many wire transfers from a Romanian national to the Biden family to shell companies that the Biden family created that were then dispersed back down to various Biden family members. These payments were made while Joe Biden was vice president. These payments were made soon after, just days after he flew out, flew out of Romania on Air Force Two. What, a great. Uh, what the human informant alleged in the FBI form is exactly the same as what we saw in Romania. Uh, the vice president at the time, Joe Biden, was in the country. Uh, he was talking about foreign policy. And then and uh, soon, soon afterwards, according to this highly credible, well-respected human source, no. then uh, there was a bribe made. Uh, and, and it specifically detailed allegations that the bribe would be made in a way that would be very difficult to find, that they would use various bank accounts and various shell companies. Well, I agree with that. Jim Jordan, thank you. James Comer, thank you. One All right. So some interesting reporting there. Nothing surprising, but the Democrats are trying to obfuscate and Comer is trying to deliver the truth. So we're going to be back. Obviously, we'll see what happens on Thursday. They're going to be moving forward with contempt hearings and we'll be looking forward to that. But will this have the backing of Kevin McCarthy, the
the Speaker of the House. Here's what he said. Tell me about this deal with Chris Ray at the FBI. Is he going to be held in contempt? He will be held in contempt if he oh. doesn't do what is responsible to do. Remember, in the commitment to America, well, Republicans said we'd go and make sure we had accountability and transparency. We had a whistleblower come before us and, and say that he'd gone to the FBI about hearing of a $5 million bribe from a foreign individual to then Vice President um, Biden, and then talked about sending money to LLCs and others. Mm -hmm. We subpoenaed that because, remember, Congress has the constitutional right of the oversight of the FBI. This document is not even classified. What is the first thing that uh, Director Ray said? He didn't even acknowledge whether he had it. He said he wouldn't provide it. I had a phone call with him, explained to him, if he does not provide this, we will hold him in contempt. Now nice. he said, yes, we do have the document, but he'll only show it to the chairman and ranking member. That is not how the Constitution works. Everybody on the Committee of Oversight, Republican and Democrats, have a right to see this unclassified document. If he doesn't come forth and allow everyone to see it, we will move contempt charges against him on Thursday. Ooh. Secretary Blinken had the same problem when he would not give the documents about what happened in Afghanistan. He now realizes, yes, he should supply it to everybody on the committee. Congress has the constitutional right to oversee and to hold this government accountable. We are loaned the voice of the people and we have a right to see it and look. The FBI now says there's an ongoing investigation. I wonder why there was an investigation before. Yeah, that's They also news. said they need to protect the individual. We understand that. I see documents that way all the time. Redact whatever you need to protect the individual, but show us the document and everybody on oversight. It is interesting, Speaker, that there was an allegation about these kind of shenanigans with cash and policy while the, Joe Biden was vice president, and then Comer subpoenas bank records, and the bank records reflect money coming in from overseas disguised through LLCs, and the FBI is saying they only want to show it to two people. Why only two people, number one? Number two, what will this contempt process look like on Thursday? Well, the contempt process would first go through the through the committee and then to the floor the next week. But this is what's interesting. Remember when this document came to the FBI or this informant a number of years ago? What happened? Did anything happen during that time? And what they accused this vice president, what they said they heard was a foreign entity would supply money to an LLC that would send more money to an LLC that would get to the president, the vice president, based upon actions he would take. Take place. No one heard or saw this. And then when this committee started taking action this year, what did we find out? We found that there were banks that actually the Bidens were getting money from an LLC, from a foreign dignitary <laughs> sending the money. Foreign and you know what? Dignitary. This business the Bidens have, they don't own any real estate. That's interesting. A foreign dignitary. That's a new phrase that I don't think we've heard yet. There were a lot of talks that this was a foreign national, but I was thinking maybe this was a business interest or something that Hunter facilitated. I didn't know that it was official policy decisions. They don't make anything. They don't manufacture anything. But a lot of people in the Biden family get money down to, down to grandchildren, down to um, in-laws, but they don't work there. Isn't that a little awkward or odd? D doesn't that raise the prospect that maybe you should look at this further? And so- Unless you're protecting them. Christopher Ray does not want his legacy tarnished with a contempt of Congress charge. I imagine there's a, a legacy factor in, into his decision. I don't know. There should be. It, it's, They'll probably promote him. They'll probably make him vice president. Seems as though when he first would not even acknowledge the document when I said I would move contempt, he then acknowledged the document and supplied it to two people. That does not meet the criteria. Criteria. Every single person on the oversight committee, they have a responsibility, not just two people, Republicans and Democrats. All of them have a right to see it. That is their job. That is the role of that committee. And we have constitutional authority over the FBI. They don't get to tell us yes or no about this prospect. So if he will not follow through on his job, being the lawmaker or the individual, the top cop in lawmaker. society, could he should have to Enforce follow through the law. on the responsibilities <laughs> that he has. Imagine 
imagine the FBI director following through with his duties and responsibilities. Following the law. Give me a freaking break. That's a hilarious thing. Yeah, they're really, really concerned about that. Uh, unless you are an enemy, then they'll just create charges against you. So Congress is going to be moving forward, it sounds like. I would say just based on their talk aggressively. Now, they talk aggressively all the time. We talk a lot about that here. A lot of talk, talk, talk all the time. But now we're getting to the point where there very well may be the FBI director of the United States of America held in contempt of Congress for covering up for the president of the United States of America in a quid pro quo scheme involving a foreign dignity to the tune of $5 million for policy changes. Woo! So things are about to get spicy. And of course, we're going to continue to cover it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for liking this video. And we'll see you on the next release. Thank you.